Hello and good morning and welcome to the voice of the Microsoft partner. I want to say thank you so much uh, for everybody for, for coming today. Today we got a, a, a great uh, a great event really. I think it's um, kind of apropos. We've got a lot of folks that have um, mentioned um, you know, that they have trouble with Microsoft Partner Center and that's kind of a, an issue. Uh, Phil, you can go ahead and stop, uh, stop sharing please. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so today we're really talking about uh, Microsoft Partner Center. It's uh, pretty pretty simple. Um, our agenda for today uh, actually is 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 um, you know with just kind of our, our welcome message. I got a couple of quick announcements, um, and then we're getting right into um, doing a walkthrough for Partner Center. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and open Partner Center on your side. Uh, we're going to be showing our Partner Center, uh, and then you can actually walk along with us while we're actually getting going, right? So we can kind of do that. Um, real quick, I want to uh, uh, ask you, um, um, so we'll do, the, excuse me, so we're going to do the walkthrough. Uh, we've got two great speakers. I'm going to introduce them in a second, right? Uh, and then we should be going through a whole thing. You're going to go from a uh, questionable user to a power user, hopefully by the end of this session. That's what's going to be really the important thing. So uh, next is we're actually putting together, we're, we're putting our mouth, uh, our, our our money where our mouth is uh, when it comes to uh, you know, working with Microsoft and working with our partners. So we're actually putting together a uh, language understanding uh, chatbot uh, that has to do with Microsoft partner questions because we're trying to figure this out. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link into the chat um, uh, for everybody here. Uh, and what this link is, it's to a form. And I'm wondering if I could get your help uh, from the group where you can come in here and, and this form and actually just put in your name and email only if you want us to actually reach back out to you to help you. But if you could come in and put in some random questions that you have about Microsoft or about working with Microsoft or, or the ones that you have that just like, oh my gosh, I just don't understand, you know, what to do, where to go, how to do this. What we're trying to put together is a big knowledge base of questions that are coming from our you know, partner group. Basically, that's what we're really trying to do. So I'll go ahead and let me get this link right now. I'll go ahead and put that into the chat window. And then we'll go ahead and post this in LinkedIn as well, uh, just for uh, everybody to um, go ahead. Let me get to the chat one second. Um, I'm doing multiple things here, screens. Uh, and, and whatnot. So uh, the link is in the chat. Now, you don't have to do this right now, uh, or you could do it while we're actually talking or whatnot, but that's what's really uh, kind of important. Now, the second thing um, that I want to just, you know, we have rules of engagement here. Please start putting your questions uh, inside of uh, the um, uh, chat window. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and start putting questions inside the chat window. I'm happy to 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 uh, answer them while we're doing this. We've got two great speakers from two different distribution partners of ours that are really going to help us, you know, kind of, uh, you know, talk about some of these important things. So go ahead and do that. We'll answer them as best we can. You might even have an opportunity to ask, you know, the the, the questions right away. We also have some, some polls today, um, and these are polls that are kind of just we're we're going to be using these to kind of see. Um, you know, uh, who has that? Oh, look, no permissions. OK, you know, I think that that's uh, my problem. I think I didn't make that. Uh, hold on. Looks like I need to go to forms.myoffice.com and go into that and put permissions uh, available. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, OK, so I think we got to go to uh, permission. Oh, I think it's collect responses and then um, anyone can respond. OK, I think we've changed that. Uh, to anyone that can respond. Uh, now you should be able to do that. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, John, uh, on that one. Really do appreciate that. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, let me go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, so we're doing the polls. That's going to be some kind of fun today. Um, and it'd be just interesting to hear uh, what you have. Thank you, Jeffrey. All right. It's actually been fixed. See, that, how, how quick was that, right? Super awesome. Um, and uh, awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, so go ahead and answer them. Now, the polls are anonymous, right? So we're just kind of using those to kind of see what the temperature is, you know, with the group of folks that are here that are talking. Uh, and then, uh, you know, next month, we actually have uh, uh, great content. The other thing that we're going to do today as well is we have a super secret link to an area in Partner Center that will show you um, if you have any co-op funds, any co-op dollars that need to be spent from the last period. We're going to talk all about that today, and we're going to get right into it. Okay, with that being said, let me go ahead and bring on uh, my speakers. Uh, Edvin and Jeffrey, if you could go ahead and turn on your, um, your um, 
uh, excuse me, yes, your video <laughs> and your uh, audio there. Let me go ahead and stop sharing here so we can actually get focused here. Um, Evan, would you mind uh, introducing yourself and a little bit about your organization? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, nice to meet you, everybody. My name is Evan Froelich. I'm a Microsoft Channel Manager at Arrow, and Arrow is actually a really large business built out in between three parts, which is electronic components, hardware, and intelligent solutions, and enterprise computing solutions, which is where I live. So that's the, the cloud side of the business. We have a line card of about 100 different vendors. And within that, Microsoft, which is, which is my focus, our role as a channel manager is partner enablement, partner growth, developing resources, and helping you win business. So, you know, we meet with Microsoft on a weekly basis and we're an extension of your team. We're a boutique shop and we're responsive and we're here to help. And a lot of my team members are ex Microsoft people like myself and like Sherman. And uh, we utilize a platform called Aerosphere and Aerosphere is a lead groundbreaking uh, platform that uses analytics and it has dashboards and is one of the most seamless platforms that I've seen to manage your customers, cloud licenses. And, you know, we do demos and help walk you through that. And we're building some AI into it, which is Aerosphere Assistant. It's dropping in September. It's kind of like a co-pilot buddy being built into the platform. So, yeah, we bring a lot of our partners to, to work with Sherman and the Crancer Group. You know, we've seen a lot of growth and, and found co-op funds, which is really important. Everybody likes money. So super excited to, to talk through Partner Center and help you guys understand the ins and outs of Microsoft. All right. Hey, thanks so much, Evan. Really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I think it's good. we're going to have some really great feedback. We've, already, we've, we've been talking for a couple of weeks now, the, the whole group here. <laughs> so I think the folks here will be really happy to hear that. So thanks so much. All right. Let's go to Jeffrey DiMaria. Jeffrey. Hey, Sherman. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Um, you know, I, I just love your show, just being the voice of the Microsoft partner. Um, I'm blessed at the Stratus Cloud Alliance to work with the Dynamics channel to try to bring them to Business Central. Um, so that's migrating the base. So we're in a very unique position as a distributor, uh, similar uh, to Arrow, but our specialties in the Dynamics 365 space. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while, love working with partners, helping them find that opportunity. Um, I mean, it's so cliche, but there's, you know, it's never been a better time to be a partner um, with Microsoft and what they're doing with their investments for FY25 are just fantastic. So getting a, a really strong foundation with Partner Center is I think a really critical component because many of our partners, they've been working with a tool called Partner Source Business Center, which is not Partner Center. So there is a big learning curve that we're going through right now and uh, just thankful to be here. All right, fantastic. And, you know, it's it interesting. I was actually at the mothership yesterday uh, up in Seattle, and I was talking uh, to a few different executives up there, and I brought up the notion of Partner Center that we were doing this today. And, and uh, man, it was like it was a collective roll of the eyes. And, um, you know, what we found out was there's no really one person that is in charge of Partner Center. That's their thing. And mm -hmm. it seems like an amalgamation of thousands of different programs. Uh, I think somebody told me that uh, five years ago, there were 72,000 links uh, through Partner Center uh, that were never curated, that were never, you know, hey, uh, what were those? And there were 72,000 and that basically were attaching to programs that may have been five years old, six years old, 10 years old, right? And now they actually had a team that kind of came in and now it's down to something like seven or 10,000, right? Uh, but uh, most importantly, that's why it's always kind of been tough because, you know, I don't, you know, navigating this and it's always changing, right? We always know that it's always changing. You're like, oh gosh, you know, what's going on here? So uh, very interesting feedback, you know, from, from Microsoft, which then in turn kind of tells us all the things that we need to know, right, of, of what this is. So let me go ahead and share my screen. We're gonna kind of get right into it. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think you should do today uh, before we even get started would be one, I would go to your desktop and I would actually create a folder and I would create the folder and, and the folder's name would be Microsoft Audit 2025 or or maybe uh, uh, May uh, 2020, no, excuse me, uh, we're in July now, July 2020, 
four. Gosh, oh my gosh, this is crazy, right? Um, but I'm going to do that now because what we're going to be doing today is we're downloading four or five different reports today that you're going to be putting in. And the main thing that we want to do this audit is we want to keep everyone honest, right? Um, well, it seems that there's a little bit of breakage, right? And, and that, but okay. So if you actually log into uh, Microsoft Partner Center, uh, you may or may not see all of these different buttons that you're seeing there. You may only see two buttons. You may only see three buttons. And Jeffrey, why is that? And you know, let's go into the most important part of this. Why? Why is it that some of the partners may only see one or two of these buttons? So everyone just must understand Partner Center is the center of your partnership with Microsoft from just a transaction standpoint. And if you're new here, um, the user management settings are critical to help expose some of these different workspaces. Uh, to adjust your user settings, you can go up to the gear um, right next to your picture there and go to account settings. And then on the left-hand side, you'll see user management. And user management is really critical different roles for different team members uh, we recommend you know if you're your partner that has full visibility give yourself all the rules um, but the ones that are really important uh, the global admin so that you can sign up for all the different programs and uh, sign users the mpn admin allows you to measure your solution designation status the incentives admin allows you to enroll in the MCI engagements. The report viewers allow you to look at uh, customer data, uh, which we'll go into later. Admin agent allows you to service your clients. Uh, there's just a tremendous amount of power and information available through here, and much of that is controlled through the user permissions. That's excellent. Uh, and this is actually the best way. Um, there's two, there's a, there is another way where you can actually go to your uh, picture, okay? And you can actually go into your, view your permissions, right? We could, we could do that, right? We can go to my profile. However, we did find this nuance to that. That profile doesn't have all of these buttons if you go through the user management. It's really weird. It's so weird. And then you're like, wait, what's going on? But I think what Jeffrey was talking about and what I just did is I when I went in here, I put my name and I clicked into my name, but you're gonna find out that you may not have these clicked, right? That, that's the thing is you may not have these clicked and that's why you don't have all of the buttons when you open a partner center. Would, would you agree with that, Jeffrey? That, that's really the reason why? Okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, and, 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 and Evan, I mean, do, do, you, do, you, uh, do you ever get any feedback you know, from your partners kind of with, with that type of, why can't I see this stuff? Does that, does that come up? Absolutely. As a distributor, we jump on with our partners and go through Partner Center all the time because the, the roles that, you know, the global admins assign to the users, that ultimately dictates what access they have, right? So if the roles aren't set up correctly and these buttons aren't checked off, that's why you're not going to see these, these different access points, which, you know, that's why you got to jump on and, and check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So if we if we have user management and make sure that you click them all. Now, if you click them all today and um, you're going to notice it actually takes about 24 hours. Okay. Uh, for it to actually, um, you know, kind of circle back and then show on partner center. So if you don't have them today, that's okay because you can just kind of follow along uh, with what we're doing. Right. Um, all right. So let's, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Uh, when I look at this, you know, the very first tab that I always like to look at is really the benefits tab, right? Uh, it's upper left-hand corner, the very first one. Now, this may seem rudimentary to a few of you, okay? But I'm going to just call out a few different things here, um, you know, with, with benefits, okay, that comes out here. So when you open up the benefits tab, the very first thing you're going to actually see here is, you know, your marketing benefits. They want to do this. And, and a lot of these marketing benefits are standard, you know, across any industry, across any manufacturer, they're going to give you those. But one of them I do like to call out is this thing called geo expansion readiness assessment. It's actually ran by a good friend of mine, Paul Solsky, who's been on the, on the tab before. But if you're a um, company that is looking to enter the U.S. market, an ISV that's looking to uh, enter the U.S. market, or you're looking to expand from the U.S. to, let's say, EMEA or the Africas or uh, Asia Pacific, right? Um, you could go here, you can click into this particular program, and it's about a $15,000 uh, benefit for you. They actually help you put together a business plan. They help you understand the local customs, kind of how business is being done. I think it's fantastic. Like it's, it really is, it's, it's a little known one, it's kind of put in, put in there, but I just wanted to call that out. 
The next thing I want you to kind of also call out here, um, and, and, and just so forgive me, but um, our partner centers are just gonna be very uh, meek, okay? When you look at mine compared to yours, because we actually don't sell to the public, okay? And we need to have access to partner center uh, so that we can actually get a lot of information. However, you're gonna see one customer, which is my sandbox, uh, and some neat things. And and so when you look over here and on the, on the benefits, this is where your IURs are gonna be, the individual use rights that you're gonna get when you have your silver or gold that are retiring, whether you have your um, uh, new solution partner designations. As you can see on my, it says maps, right? Well, that's the Microsoft Action Pack. We, we buy that one, right? Um, and we get Azure, we get $100 a month in Azure credits. But you can also click into the software, which is in the upper left-hand corner, and this is going to be all the software that is available to you for individual use rights, which means for free, not for free because you're paying for it, but it's at a deeply discounted rate based on your partnership level, right? So if you get uh, an SPD, for example, I think you get for um, Azure SPD, you get 100 uh, Office 365 E3 users. And then in the Azure credits, you'll see about 500,000 or 500, not $500, $500 a month right, which would then uh, equate to about $6,000 in Azure credits. Make sure that you redeem them uh, and, and do that. So that's really what it is uh, in, in benefits. There's really not a lot to benefits. It's just a, a really good, uh, good place to kind of start off. Now, uh, for the group here, if you guys have any questions, please, um, you know, go ahead and, and put those in there. Um, ooh, Chuck's got a great question right now. Uh, how long to the end of silver and gold legacy benefits? Okay. Now, I just ran 50 sessions on SPD, so I know the answer to this. Uh, and, and you may or may not like it. Um, so um, remember when SPDs came out back uh, three years ago, two, two and a half years or three years ago, and they said, after six months, silver and gold is going to go away. Remember that? Remember that? And then they said, well, you can do maybe for one year, right? And uh, well, the adoption rate was really low. Um, but now we're three, three years into it. Um, and I do believe that those are going to be going away in September. So you will not be able to renew after September. If your benefit will take you into November or December, or you're renewing like right now, it's going to bring you around the horn, but, uh, nothing new. And that's kind of the plan, uh, is to do it in, uh, in, in September is when it's going to just spread away. Okay. And remember, you know, the SPDs are really put in place for us to be more specialized because how are we going to be, how, how's it possible that we're going to be experts at 5,000 cloud workloads in the past 10 years, right? That's just impossible. So not a bad idea to get a little bit more focused, okay? And it gets you on. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next one. I think is near and dear to my heart. Uh, and this is going to be our first thing. Go ahead and click into customers. Okay, so we're going to click into customers. And when we click into customers, um, the first report that I want you to download uh, or actually do is I want you to, you're going to see a list of your customers here. And then I want you to click this export button, okay? Now I'm gonna click into the export button button. And, um, and then I'm gonna take that file and I'm gonna put that as my very first report that I want to audit. Okay, now, Evan, let me ask you a question. Okay, um, you know, we found out when we work with partners uh, that uh, their customer list and, and what's in their distributor list is different. Uh, that there's a six to eight percent breakage, uh, and they're like, "Wait, what's going on? Wait, where are my customers? They're not located here." And then they go to the Aerosphere, and they're like, "Hey, I got 20 customers here, but I don't see 10 in in in, in customers in in the partner center." Do you uh, run into this? You know, do you hear this? You know, from your partners that you work with? Yeah, no, we absolutely do, and you know, it it happens because of just the amount of customers and partners that Microsoft has, and it's it's really important that you look through, okay, this is my customer list. Let's make sure that matches up in the distribution list and matches up in partner center, because ultimately you're getting credit based off your, your deployments and everything that what's tied out of partner center. So if those lists are off, which happens sometimes, especially with customers that are bringing over, you know, 20, 30, 40 different customers at once, you have to go through and kind of do an audit to make sure that the domain's correct, everything's matched up, so that you get all the credit you deserve for for those customers. Yeah, right. Uh, that, that's how you get attribution. <laughs> that's how you get attribution, right? Uh, especially yeah. towards SPDs, your your old gold and silver benefits. If you don't have them in there, Microsoft says you don't have them. Yep. Right. Um, interesting. Uh, if you look at the polls, 
maybe five, yes, seven, two say no, and then two say, are you serious all the time? <laughs> so that's the, that's the responses. Jeffrey, uh, wh what are your thoughts? Uh, have you seen that on your side? You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, with the evolution of the CSP program, Microsoft has changed the way orders were submitted. Um, back in the day, you didn't necessarily have to include an, uh, a CSP reseller when you're submitting that. So you only had an indirect provider and the indirect was not necessarily tied to a subscription. So I'm wondering if that might be one of the breakage things after hearing that a little bit more. There might be a negative one in there for for that subscription. Mm -hmm. um, that's anyways, <clears throat> just thinking about that. But one of the things that I'm kind of seeing is I did an export on ours and just the data format that comes out of the export itself. If you look at the company names, I, I think the system really hates commas. <laughs> if you have a comma in a company name, it ends up throwing out the export to an extra row. And when you have data talking to each other, I can see mismaps happening all the time with that data structure. So, you know, there's a couple of theories there. And I, I know that you're working with people and talking and theorizing. I think that might be one of them. So I think one way partners might be able to help resolve this with the M365 Admin Center, you can update the organization information at your clients' tenants so that, you know, you might be able to remove the commas from their name so that your reports show up properly. Just a couple of theories. <laughs> and, I, and I like that, though. I, I, I do like that. that that's, that's important. You know, and, and uh, you know, uh, we talk about data. Um, uh, you've got to clean up your data. What's that? Uh, data cleanliness or, or what? Cleanliness. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm missing that one here. It's right at the tip of my tongue. But yeah, we, we need to make sure, and a good idea to also make sure that the names of your, if you're putting in a new order, right, maybe the company name is, um, you know, something manufacturing ink, but then you put in something manufacturing, right, or something like that. Now, you know, what's uh, data hygiene? Thank you, Rebecca. That's you're the it. best. Thank you, Rebecca. Data hygiene. <laughs> Exactly. So that, that is, I think, what we're finding uh, is there. And we're going to actually show you today um, how to actually uh, start claiming those. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, the other thing, too, is it was funny. Uh, we we um, in those discussions I had yesterday, they were just talking about how the telemetry is just kind of messed up, you know, a little bit in there. Uh, but your your number one platinum provider is really your distributor. So the second thing you do is after you export this, what I want you to do is call your distributor or go to Aerosphere or Shadows Cloud Alliance's, you know, back end uh, system and actually download that customer list and put that into your Microsoft audit folder. That's going to be the step one of our cross comparison uh, with these sets. OK, so let's go ahead and, and move over to uh, GDAP. Right, uh, that's kind of a good thing. Some people don't know a little bit about GDAP. I think uh, we have you, uh, Jeffrey, talk a little bit about that. Where, where do we go for that? Yeah, I and mean, there's a couple ways to access it. You can see it from the minister button right there as well. You can also get it from when you're in individual customers. Yep, GDAP, GDAP is, it's fantastic for your clients, right? They're protecting their data. You only provide access to what you need. Right. And that's what granular delegated admin privilege is about. Historically, we used to have full rights as an admin agent into a client's tenant. And due to the segregation of duties and data, roles, responsibilities, granular delegated admin came out. And, you know, based on your service offerings to clients, you'll probably end up having a standard set of uh, enter ID roles that you would need to assign. So if you are to, you know, pretend to request a new relationship, this is where you can do that up above. You can request it and assign the specific roles. In Dynamics, uh, there's like a Dynamics administrator role. You may want access to the Power Platform roles. You may want, you know, M365 exchange roles, whatever you may need. When you select that blue link, it'll provide you all the different roles. Um, within there on the right there. Yep. And you need to learn this and you need to make sure you know what maps to your service offerings so that you can do this for a client. You can make this up to two years and then you renew it. 
Um, this actually just reminded me of something really important. If you're in the Microsoft CSP space, if your client agreement was executed, the MCA was executed before April 2023, that was prior to NCE release, go ahead and resend the link out to your clients because they need to re-execute the MCA agreement um, for their new renewals. Just so you're aware, there's a there's a post I can share with that. That's that's important and that might actually help the cleansing role too. Great anecdote. That is perfect. That's why we do this. That's why we're here every month kind of talking about these little like little things, right? To kind of figure out. Okay. Um, awesome. So those are the, really the two main, uh, you know, uh, important things. I think you have uh, indirect providers who you're actually aligned with um, and then you're expiring grandly relationships, but let's go back to home. Okay. Now the next one we're going to go to, and this is part of the audit that we do. I always like to go into um, earnings. It's extremely important here. So everyone go ahead and click into earnings. Now, the sad thing is that you're gonna see, I'm gonna have a bunch of zeros because I don't have any clients, okay? But uh, it, uh, hopefully you have earnings uh, inside of here. Now, if you don't have earnings inside of here, that also tells us that maybe your silver and gold has expired. Um, maybe you're just a MAPS partner. Maybe you're a partner that doesn't sell uh, Office 365 or Azure, or maybe you're a partner that does, but you don't have any earnings. We talked to a customer yesterday that had 200 Azure clients and they had big fat zeros in here. And I was like, it was just kind of like a fall off the seat moment. Holy Moses. So um, the best thing to do here uh, when you go into earnings is we're going to get into the actual report is I would like to go over to um, three months. And I usually like to go 12 months in earnings uh, for that. So I can go ahead and apply that. Right. Uh, and then you can put some filters in if you want to. Right. I don't have any filters. I don't have any clients here. But if I wanted to do, you know, by co-op or what, whatever I wanted to do, I can do that. But one of the, the, the best things that I actually look at is earnings by distributions and trends, okay? You're gonna have by payment status, by lever, by earning type, but under by payment status, there's two things that I really wanna call out here. One is this thing called ineligible funds that you may be seeing or unprocessed funds. So uh, Evan, you know, do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, ineligible funds? Yeah, absolutely. So ineligible funds are funds that you would have received if you had a solution partner designation in place. And I know that the, the gold and silver legacy status, and you definitely hold a lot of value, but it's really time to start thinking about the solution partner designations and working towards that because you're doing the work. You might as well get credit for it. So, you know, it's it's definitely something important to, to start working towards and making sure you don't have ineligible funds there that you could have earned. Excellent, excellent. And then what is unprocessed funds, Jeffrey? You know, those can fall into a couple different categories um, in a way. Uh, so the unprocessed funds, they can either be the, the, the payment status that's being paid out, or it's additional funds that you may be able to, to spend on different activities that are there. Um, I think you have a, a really good list of activities that partners can spend those co-op dollars on. Is that part of it? That is absolutely correct. Yeah, it's and, and the, the caveat there is if you have um, under or ten thousand dollars or literally zero to ten thousand, um, you're just going to get a check. So if you see a number in there that's like six thousand five hundred, you're just going to get a check, and that's going to be every six months. Now, as you grow your business, if you end up with ten thousand and one dollars, then you actually go into the co-op situation where sixty percent of that you'll get as a check. Okay, and that's that weird deposit from Microsoft that has no mention to what it actually is. Okay, and then the other 40%, $4,001, will go into a co op bucket, which you either have to spend or you lose it. Microsoft gets it back. Now, here at the Cranston Group, we are, um, we are determined to make sure that you get every penny that you deserve and that Microsoft doesn't get to keep it. They didn't make enough money, they, they do enough. Like, <laughs> Make sure that you can get the money, but then use that to build your business because you can spend it on uh, marketing, uh, uh, digital marketing. Um, I don't know if you can do print ads anymore, print marketing, um, but you can do events. You can actually use it for certifications. Uh, you can use it to attend Ignite. You can pay for the Ignite ticket. You can pay for 
uh, the hotel and the uh, airfare on a Microsoft-led event. You can go do those things. It's really fantastic. Or practice building. A lot of our, our clients, um, we consult with them, and all of our services are paid for by co-op, literally. So they're not paying hardly anything out of pocket, which is kind of cool, right? Because they get, they get that extra help, right? But the main thing is we don't want to leave anything on the table. So this is where you go. Now, in order to download the report, you're just going to go up to download the report. And then you want to go earnings by default, okay? You can actually do growth or market, but I would do earnings by default. And when you do the earnings by default, well, mine says uh, there's no data to download because I don't have any earnings, but you will have an actual report there. Now, that would be the third uh, report that we're putting into that Microsoft audit folder. Now, why is that important? Because when we match up our current customers to our customers that are out of the distribution, we're going to then compare that to earnings because what we need to do is say, well, wait a minute. I got this customer over here, ABC Manufacturing. I sold them uh, 25 licenses, right? Uh, e Office 365 E3, like three years ago. But I upgraded them to the M365 E5s. But wait a minute. I'm not getting payouts on those E5 upgrades. Wait a minute. For some reason, that workload didn't get attributed to me. I don't, I'm not partner of record for that increase in workload blow your mind away, like really, seriously, but that actually happens and that's what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're constantly looking at this stuff and, and then every six months say, okay, well, we need to make sure that we're getting uh, the, the maximum amount of money that we actually can, okay? So that's, uh, that's the last little thing uh, in there. I think we had a question that uh, uh, came up. Uh, let me go back to, um, I got like 40 windows open here. Um, does everybody have good numbers for the last two months, but is this month very, very small? Um, yeah, that could be because, uh, you know, the, the first year, first month of the year, um, a lot of the Microsofters are, are kind of, you know, asleep for a little bit uh, because, uh, you know, they spend all this time. Uh, it's just kind of like that way. They go on the vacation. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, Chuck. That, that might be a, a thing there. I'm curious if anybody else has that. Answer in the chat window if you're seeing the same thing. Um, but it should be trailing 12 months. That's where it should be. All right. Let's go back over to home. Uh, and now what I want to do here is I want to go to the, I think, the most important one uh, of the whole session, and that is incentives. Okay, let's go ahead and click into incentives. Now, uh, this is where, um, let me go ahead and um, um, let me talk about co-op first, because I want to show this. Uh, Phil, can you place the um, super secret link? Uh, that we have uh, in um, in the chat window for everybody, please. Sure, okay. um, so we have the super secret link that's going to take us to a, a page uh, uh, for co-op management that's going to tell each and every one of you how much money you actually have for co-op. Now, I want you to bookmark this because it's just an easy way to find it instead of going through co-op management and click and click this and click that and click that. We're going to actually put this in the chat window uh, in just a moment. Um, while I am waiting, we will talk about the incentives here. So um, one of the things to make sure that when you click into the overview page uh, in incentives, look down to where it says Azure incentives. As you see, this one says program discontinued or Microsoft Commerce incentives. Make sure that you're enrolled. Now, um, you know, you might have to uh, put some banking information uh, inside of that, um, but uh, really important uh, to make sure. Okay. Uh, Gianna actually put it into the chat window. If you guys can go ahead and click into that link, I'm going to go ahead and click into that link myself, and then I'm going to show you why this is so cool. I'm going to show you a couple quick things I want us all to, to hit on um, really quickly when this um, partner center comes up. So cool thing is it tells you right away, claim co-op for fund category, right? But what we need to do is we need to change a couple things here. First and foremost, we need to change the fund category to default non-surface funds and then push apply. Okay, now when that happens, it's really weird. That's just the only one that happens to, to be with all the uh, MCI incentives. Okay, that's where it is. And then you can do usage period if you want to, right? So we could go back to 2023, uh, but January to June, that would probably be a good one, push apply. And what that means is if it, um, whatever funds that you see in there, okay, uh, means that uh, those are the funds that you can use for Microsoft Co-op, very simple, okay? And then you go ahead and uh, make a claim, which we'll get into in just, just a moment. 
Um, but uh, important to, to, to note uh, with that, let me go ahead and open up my other screen here. Um, all right. Um, so, Jeffrey, what, what do you um, what, what, what do you think is the number one problem that you see with partners um, when maybe it comes to uh, incentives? You know, our, our dynamics channel is special. Okay, we 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 have a different uh, method to approach in the cloud. Um, M three sixty five, Office three sixty five. They had a couple year head start on us. Okay, we'll we'll just put it out there. So a lot of our partners, they're they're just getting into this tool for the first time. This is a new platform. You know, you mentioned seven thousand links. I mean, try try learning this for the first time. Things are changing. Yeah, so trying to help them, guide them, and, and and teach them how these tools, how the new cloud world is is working, is is really the fundamentals. Now, the Dynamics Channel, the SMB ERP partners, they've had a moving target for their solution designation status and being able to obtain that, and it's been really challenging. I think we finally got it. I really do. And everybody in the ERP space, like I keep on thinking about like Eminem and like this is the moment we've been waiting for. Um, <laughs> I, like that. I live in Detroit. I live in Detroit. Who knew, right? <laughs> so what Microsoft has done, and, and I'm sorry I'm going on a tangent on this one, but this is real. There is money to migrate the base. There are offers and discounts. They've extended promotions. They double down on Business Central. So what does that mean? There is money for assessments for MCI. There's money for determining what it takes to move to Business Central. There's money for a plan to get there. And you bubble these things all up and the, and the value and the seriousness of what Microsoft is doing for this, this channel is just I, I hope it's a breakout year for for everyone that I've been doing business with for 15 years, because it, it's that kind of moment. And Me if you too. want to know why we're so excited about it, you know, I'm, I, we're happy to further explain it. But um, you can go into the MCI engagements here on the left, click under the business applications category. Um, there's different categories here. You know, be, before we get into that one, let, 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 me, let yeah. me just go back to, to Evan really quick. And, and, and there's going to be a new, I have a new operational um, system that I want everyone to put in place um, uh, before I get in here. And, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to assign one person. Okay. One person who has access to this thing called MCI engagements. Okay. Now, anytime you have a renewal coming up in three months, I would like that person to get notified with this potential renewal, because this is where you're going to go to see what that renewal will mean as far as back-end incentives. Like it could be just the, re, you know, the, the back-end rebate, but there's also a bunch of other things, deployment funds, assessment things that we can kind of talk about, but you want to have somebody that's constantly doing that. But also that person should be for any net new deal that you're working on, you know, share it with that person. And that person says, well, hold on, before you put together the SOW, let me see what we can find. What can we get? You know, what can we what can we stack, you know, to maybe make the deal better, right? Um, or sweeten the deal or separate ourselves from the competition, right? So that's that, that's what I want you to do. Um, and and that one person then kind of has this role to kind of set that up. And now now we're maximizing things. So so Evan, you know, when, when I show this area here, I do you know there, there's these green check boxes that are over here. Do you want to kind of tell me what those are, you know, and, and why that's important? Yeah, sure. So the, the green check marks signify that these are programs that you're eligible to engage in and incentives you're eligible to earn. So for example, if, if you are you know part of the M365 customer ad, if you go in there, then whenever you have uh, a new customer ad, which I hope we're doing all the time, then you can earn an additional, I think it was 6% uh, on that indirect uh, provider to build revenue. So it's important to have these in place and subscribe and you know it's eligible money that you tack on like you said to what you're already earning so it's really important to get an idea of 
what programs you are eligible for, and then subscribe to those programs. Exactly. Absolutely. And and that that's the the real thing here, right? And and then you know, um, in, in, and how you read these is actually pretty pretty easy, right? It's you know, customer ad net new commerce, and it says, okay, we're going to provide you a reward for adding a CSP customer. What is the eligibility? You know, what do you have? Uh, and what are the additional details, right? That you have. Now, Evan, you mentioned, you know, you have a lot of partners that are a little bit more mature. They have a partner solution designation, maybe in security. What would be something that would be good for them to look at uh, with some of their customers? Where would you go inside of MCI engagements? By far, the, the coolest one, in my opinion, is the, the threat protection. So the threat protection is where Microsoft will actually pay you to run uh, a threat protection assessment in your customer's environment. It's up to, I believe it's $6,500 or so. So this is, you know, Microsoft paying you to say, okay, let's meet with the customer. Let's make sure their environment's secure. And, and then they're going to pay you for it. So it's a, it's the coolest incentive that I've seen. Yeah. And, and the way to read this too. So if you look at these, this is how you read them. Okay. One is, okay, what is the, what is the engagement, right? So it tells you to run a threat assessment. This is giving you the activity requirements, right? Identify customer objectives, right? Conduct a discovery threats and impossibilities and then kind of, you know, look at what they, they currently uh, are running. But then um, you can run um, uh, the, threat, uh, the threat protection engagement, right? You're looking at the Microsoft Defender portal, cloud identity protection. And then you can also run like, um, um, uh, you know, some, some of those threat assessments, right? Uh, th uh, through that, excuse me. Um, and uh, email protection and a copilot. But then it says, okay, here's your, your partner qualification. This is the thing you have to look at. It says solution partner designation. That means you have to have a security solution partner designation. Then you get qualified for this one. Now you can use this. Then it says, well, what is the customer qualification, right? Well, between 300 and 5,000 paid seats or 250 monthly active users. Okay. Now, if I meet all that criteria, what can I get, right? And as Evan was just saying, activity payments, $6,500 to actually getting that, right? So, so with that being said, now let's say you qualified for an actual part or you qualified for this, you have a customer who's qualifying. Where do we go to nominate the customer and how do we figure that out? How do we get the money? Yeah, so we'll uh, go over to the, the customers tab on the left-hand side. Then we will hit add customer next to that uh, plus sign. So then we'll submit this form with all the customer information, making sure it's that applicable customer that you mentioned where it's the 300 to 5,000 paid units, 250 plus monthly active users, once this form is submitted and it is an applicable customer, then they'll be added and approved to the list. Excellent. That's exactly what it is at TMZ. Um, but that's TMZ. exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and and what happened, you know, what would you say is a is a is a amount of time that you think is is pertinent to get a, a response back from Microsoft? It's, it's not it's not very long. I think what about a day, 24 hours, 24 like that. Day. Yeah. I mean, they're just gonna cross compare. You know, does a customer qualify? You know, does it have five, 300 seats, right? Or 250 uh, MAUs, right? Does it have that? Yes, good. And then are you qualified as a partner? Yes, good. Boom, you get a qualification. And then it'll give you what are the proof of execution requirements? And then you can go ahead and do that, right? So I think that that's, that's really important uh, there. Now, the other thing to, to, to think about, I'm gonna go to Jeffrey in just a second, but I wanna talk about Azure really quickly um, because this is where advanced specialization comes in. So if you click into the Azure one, and let's say I go down to uh, AMM partner, uh, I'm going to do medium. AMM means Azure uh, uh, Modernization and Migration. PL means partner-led. So this is something that you're going to do, right? So let's say you have an advanced specialization, and this green box is checked. You click into here. Now, what this is saying is saying, hey, if you do the migration, we want to pay you to do the migration, okay? But you have to use the cloud adoption framework. You're going to have to do a bunch of things. You're an advanced specialized partner, so you understand this stuff, right? Um, and then the activity requirements is says, okay, the project size must be between 125 and 250,000 a year in ACR, Azure Consumer Revenue. Great, okay, I got that. Partner qualification, great. I have at least one. I'm either an Azure expert MSP or I have a specialization in infrastructure and database migration. Awesome, perfect. Now, customer qualification, majors, SMC corporate or SMB customers with a valid TPID. Now look at this, $35,000. That's transformative. 
Because now if you go to your customers and say, hey, I'm competing with so-and-so, I'm competing with you, uh, but I can give you, I can actually, Microsoft believes in us so much that they're going to hit the MCI, they're going to give us money to, to fund this engagement, right? Super awesome. So that's why I think like Azure is great. But Jeffrey, let's talk about um, uh, uh, business apps. Do you want to click on one of those? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, the one that we've been working with Microsoft very closely on is the deployment plans for Business Central. So if you type in deployment plan on the search, last year we worked the whole AIM program. Um, they decided to renew some of their programs. And the one that I'm most excited about right now this year is the deployment plan, the medium size one. Okay, so that's right uh, here. This, no, no, not, a little bit further down, the uh, next categories, the next set, right there. Yep. Right there. Okay, click on that one. Okay. So what's really unique about this offer is they they changed it from last year, maybe in Microsoft. Mm -hmm. This one offer now helps satisfy new clients as well as migration clients. The way Microsoft's benefiting existing clients with their current BREP, they're giving them discounted licenses with another promotion that you can stack on top of this. So the value to migrate your base is, is massive. Now, the only way that partners can get this is again, through the solution designation of the business applications partner, that's a requirement. And that's kind of our mission is to help get our partners there, helping them understand the metrics of how to be measured as a solution designation partner and what steps they need to do that. And they measure that through, I think the membership tab, there's the different overview areas. But what's cool about this, there's eight, up to $18,000 for this size engagement to help offset the implementation costs of deploying this kind of business application. So, you know, when we started this promotion with Microsoft, we, we said to them, look, we, we're tired of discounts. Let's pay the partner to move the base to the cloud. And here you go. This is how we're going to do it. And now it's a little even more flexible. They even extended the bridge to the cloud promo this week to the end of next December. So we're doubling down and it's it's exciting. That's fantastic. Now, if you're a dynamic, so the, the partner qualification, you have to have a solution partner designation in business applications. So just a, an FYI, if you are a Dynamics partner that is struggling to get that business application SPD because of skilling, please reach out to us. Uh, we actually have a skilling as a service offer um, that will actually place Dynamics um, uh, skilled professionals uh, in your organization. Uh, there's a fee for it, uh, but it's like about 70% um, less than hiring somebody from the US that actually has that. So um, let me know, happy to help you. I'll kind of give you some details behind it, but not a bad idea. Okay, um, let's go back over to home. And what I wanna see, not home, excuse me, I'm gonna go back to incentives. Uh, we go back to the main page for incentives because there's a there's a, a, a place here that is so important to understand. Now, CPOR is an issue, right? Remember we had the breakage, right? We, the breakage with things, right? Um, and we need to figure out a little bit about, you know, um, how do we, um, you know, how do we get our customers, right, to, to show up on the list? Um, let's see. Go. So what I want you to do is go ahead and click into customer claims. And this is where we can also apply for, for, um, uh, uh, for the MCI engagement this way. But most importantly, this is where we're going to be adding a customer. So if we're not seeing a customer in our partner portal, we're going to go here. We're going to click into add customer, user consume. Okay, now the important thing inside of here when we're adding the customer, this is also like the reason why we might not get any attribution because there's this thing that's called associate the workload. What if your customer only shows Office 365, but you know you sold them the M365, right? Uh, you, you've got these and maybe that's just not showing up. So this is where you're gonna go. Instead of opening up a ticket, asking them why, not getting any answer, you gotta take it upon yourself. You go here, claim name, partner location, customer tenant ID, it is um, really the place to go. And then you just fill out the rest of that form and then it sends it. Now your customer is gonna get an email saying, hey, uh, you're the customer partner record, sends it back, they're gonna give you some proof of execution documentation that you have to upload, no problem, good, good, good scenario. 
Um, what's really weird is that they're not taking DocuSign for proof of execution lately. Um, it's just so strange, but they'll take an email from the client that says, oh yeah, I ordered that. Strange, but true. Um, so if you run into that, that's just a little nuance that I wanna make sure that uh, everybody here uh, understands. Okay, uh, so that that's really important there. Um, and then actually, Jeffrey, when we talk about PAL, Partner Admin Link, uh, just really quickly, uh, as we're running out of time here, um, just to get, get into that because that's something to do with Azure. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft makes it really easy to buy Azure directly from them. And as a partner, sometimes you might feel a little left out. So the PAL link allows you to associate your partner identity to that workload. And that helps you with the customer attributions and helps you get credits uh, to help you meet those uh, requirements for your designation. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. That's that's really good. All right, uh, Phil, I'm going to take the cloud propensity thing because I got to run really quickly through that. But let's go ahead and put this tab up here. I'm curious to see that poll about cloud propensity. I have this poll up here. I wonder if anybody understands these propensity reports through Insights. It's one of the most unbelievable program that I've ever seen uh, because it allows you to figure out what your customers are engaging with, what they're actually doing. So. Um, I'm going to put in no. I'm curious to see what people are actually utilizing here. Um, yeah, oh, we have a lot. Yeah, no, nope, not aware of them, not used them. Okay, perfect. This is the reason why I want to show it to you. So let's go back to home. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually click into um, uh, insights. Okay, one of the most, the, the it's really crazy. Okay, go ahead and click into insights. And as uh, Microsoft is a very apropos, um, it's hard to find anything. So uh, if you didn't know this, you follow my thing, go all the way to the very bottom left-hand corner, and you're going to see this thing called Downloads Hub. Okay, so go ahead and click into Downloads Hub, bottom left-hand corner. Now, this is recorded, so we'll send this back out if you're missing, if I'm going too fast here. But what Downloads Hub is going to do is going to allow you to download this amazing report. Okay, so this report is basically a propensity report, which is basically monitoring all of your current customers, looking at what they're downloading, what they're engaging, you know, what they're talking about, what they're ordering, right? Um, it's also finding out, you know, if they're adding new people to their business, do they have Amazon? Do they have this? Do, what's the next logical workload, right? So this is really cool. So you come in here, you create a new report very simply, okay? You leave this as cloud product performance, basic, and then all you do is you click down here, it says cloud ascent Azure propensity. Now, when you do that, you're gonna select all the data that you want, okay? So it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's gonna tell you the vertical, the industry. It's gonna tell you what they have in Azure, right? But it'll also tell you if they have AWS, right? Do they have Google? It's crazy. You know, what are they looking? How many existing workloads? What's the next logical workload, right? And then all we have to do here is go lifetime and give it a report. So you can do propensity, you know, July, 2024, and then you go ahead and push download now. Now, it's gonna kick it off. Great, that's gonna do, it's gonna take about 15 minutes to go ahead and get, but then you gotta create the report for the other two, which is Cloud Ascent, Microsoft 365, Cloud Propensity, same thing, you just click, 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 give it a name, download now, very simple, okay? Uh, and then you're gonna do the same thing for business applications, right? We just go down to Cloud Propensity, uh, D365 propensity, very simple, do the same thing, bing, bang, boom. Okay, but when you go back uh, to the actual report, um, let me go back to that that, that last uh, session here. Um, when we go to the actual report, it's gonna break it down into clusters. Now, you're gonna go over to line AO, I know that's right, I know it's, I've seen it so many times, and you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna click by cluster. Okay, and act now. You're looking at all the customers say act now. That's a propensity for them to buy Azure today or M365 or business based on all of their data that's coming through. So super important. Okay, okay. Now I know we're uh, we're running a little, we're, we're running really tight here. So uh, hold on a second. Okay, now our next one is membership. Okay, uh, so, so important. This is where you find your information on your solution partner designations. Okay, um, we do that. There's another poll for uh, complete audits. Now, inside of here, um, important to see this because you look at your very first one says Microsoft Action Pack, that's me, right? But solution partner designations, right? This is where it's gonna show you where the things are actually expiring, okay? Now, on the left-hand side, um, the first thing you do is you click into overview. Okay, and this is going to get us over to our solution partner designation 
area, right? Where we have business applications, digital app and innovation, modern workplace, you know, any one of these. And this is where we click for our details. You can see me, I'm actually, uh, oh, I got 10 points. It's weird. Let me go ahead and click on the details, right? How do I get 10 points? Well, deployments is the easiest thing to get because if you turn on a VM inside your one client, you get your deployments, right? Look at my growth. I'm negative 88% because I'm there. <laughs> but this is actually where, you know, we find the information on our SPDs is actually through there, right? Is, is actually getting into that. So that's what's super, super important. Now, inside of this too, um, just really quickly here, uh, I'm going to click into view details. Now, if you look at any performance and you're like, wow, my net customer ads, this doesn't make sense. Well, you go here and you download this report. Okay, you put it into your audit folder because this is what's going to be showing. And that's what you're going to kind of figure out. Well, does this partner, does this customer qualify? Is it under a thousand or is it over a thousand? Okay, that's the good thing. But on skilling, the thing to look at is your certified individuals. Now, if you have folks that are there in your team that actually have their uh, certification, but maybe you know what they didn't do in their learning portal, they didn't put your MPN ID. So you can download all of your current uh, 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 employees and with their certs here. Now, when they do align with you, it's gonna take 12, uh, uh, 30 days uh, for it to actually come into and actually go into points. Okay, so we actually, when we're working with our partner base, we're constantly in here looking at the different things that we need to do. Usage growth, that's another one, right? We can actually download this report to find out which customers are killing our usage growth. Now, there, there's, a, there's a, a, a bit of guidance that we actually have for you that you might want to disassociate some customers out of your portal, because what if they have an 80% rate of reduction? That's killing like your whole thing. Well, disassociate, take them out of the loop. Now you're not being counted towards that, okay? Plus they're down 88%, you lost the money anyways. It's not like you're uh, gonna build that, that thing back up, right? Maybe they, or they left. That's the thing to really figure out, okay? Um, so Ian had a question. Yes, Ian, that is, that is correct. It's not gonna just like, uh, if you renew now, you'll actually have that, okay? Uh, don't they also get, count as negative if you disassociate? Well, it all depends on uh, um, the net customer ad. So no, it, it it won't if we do it the right way and get them both completely out uh, of that. That's the, the purpose of it is to kind of shape the business a little bit. It's a little nuances that we figured out. So um, that's that. Okay. So um, so when you're looking at Partner Center, um, you know, I, I'm going to get back to, to, to Evan, you know, Evan, thanks so much for, for being here today. You know, what, what are some of your last thoughts uh, when it comes to, to uh, uh, Partner Center? Yeah, Partner Center, it's it's complicated, but you need to get familiar with it and understand the ins and outs. And I think presentations like this and, and things that we do with our partners at Arrow are really important because if your Partner Center isn't aligned to your actions, the programs that you're enrolled in, then you're ultimately going to be doing a lot of work that you're not going to be paid for. Microsoft has a lot of money. They have a lot of money and they're willing to give it to you. So, you know, I love that we went through this. Definitely recommend going through here and checking out these different boxes, replaying this, going through it and getting comfortable with Partner Center. And if you're looking for an indirect provider to, to help you through it and grow your business, uh, come over to Arrow and, you know, we'll work together with the Cranston Group to, to make you reach your goals and uh, succeed anything you were looking at before. So, uh, you know, thank you for, for having me, man. Awesome. Thank you. We love Arrow and we love yeah. Shadows. <laughs> Jeffrey, last thoughts? You know, I, I'm just really thankful we've been partners together or informally partners with you, for uh, Sherman, for a while and just thankful for the opportunity. I think, uh, you know, if you're paying attention to the Microsoft GTM events this week, Copilot is real. Okay. Ooh. Become customer zero. The benefits are coming in September for some AI co-pilot capabilities. And as you can tell, log in regularly. You have co-pilot and partner center now, which is crazy. They just released that in July. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, if people have questions about how to take advantage of the Business Central offers that are out there. Um, that's our specialty. And we, we hope to help help take you there. So thank you all so much and thank you.
Awesome. Thank you guys sir, for coming in. And next month, we're going to be doing selling co-pilot and AI to your customers. So it's going to be a real sales related uh, type of, um, uh, of show. Uh, we're going to be bringing on some of the partners that are doing really well uh, with it. And we look forward to seeing you there. Anyways, thanks everybody for coming for this one quick hour. We got to keep it short, simple. We'll see you again next month. Evan, Jeffrey, as always, love having you guys on. You guys are fantastic. And I uh, look forward to uh, talking with you guys again. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thanks, everyone.